This week, we'll be discussing cognitive behavior therapy. In this lecture, we're going to be focusing on one particular type of cognitive behavior therapy, which is rational emotive behavior therapy. But before we talk specifically about REBT, let's talk a little bit about cognitive behavior therapy in general. CBT has much in common with its predecessor, which is behavior therapy. But rather than solely focusing on environmental factors as the causes of behavior, CBT considers the role of cognitive factors in influencing behavior. So from this view, it's not simply environmental factors, but our thoughts, beliefs, and perceptions that determine our emotional reactions and our behaviors. So while there are many different types of cognitive behavior therapy, all the types uh, have a few things in common. They emphasize a collaborative relationship between the client and therapist. There's the belief that psychological distress is often maintained by cognitive processes. There's a focus on changing cognitions to produce changes in affect and behavior. So the belief is that if you can change your client's thought process, you can then change their emotions and their behaviors. These therapies are present-centered, so there's a focus on what is presently maintaining behaviors as opposed to the things in your client's past that may have influenced the behaviors. And there's a time-limited focus. So these types of therapies don't generally drag on for years. There's a time limit and you're addressing particular behavior problems. The therapist adopts an active and directive stance, and these are educational treatments that focus on specific target problems. Now, all of the various cognitive behavior therapies um, take the stance that beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and physical reactions are all reciprocally linked. So all of these factors can influence one another. So take, for example, um, a client who suffers from panic attacks. So they may have a physical reaction of an elevated heart rate. So it could be they just took the stairs or they went for a walk that causes their heart rate to elevate. So they have this physical reaction and their belief or their thought about this is, I'm having a heart attack. So their heart rate is elevated and their thought or their belief is, I'm having a heart attack. Now because of that belief, they feel fear. So there's an emotional reaction based on their thoughts or their beliefs. And because now they have a pounding heart rate, they believe they're having a heart attack, they feel fear, they may exhibit the behavior of going to the hospital thinking they're having a heart attack. So all of these different factors can influence each other. And CBT therapists use behavioral techniques such as operant conditioning, modeling, behavioral rehearsal, and they use these things um, and apply them to the more subjective process of thinking and internal dialogue as opposed to just behavior. So Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, or REBT, was developed by Albert Ellis. And this is the first cognitive behavioral therapy. And Ellis believed that people contribute to their own problems and symptoms by rigid and extreme beliefs they hold about events and situations. So people are disturbed not by the events themselves, but by the views they take on those events. So again, Cognitions, emotions, and behaviors interact. They have their reciprocal relationship, and it's your reaction to the events and your thoughts about the events that cause the behavioral reactions as opposed to the events themselves. So Albert believed, or Albert Ellis believed, that our emotions are mainly created from our beliefs, which then influence the evaluations and interpretations we make and fuel our reactions to life events. So a life event occurred. You have certain beliefs about that event, certain evaluations of that event and interpretations of that event, and it's those evaluations and interpretations that then fuel your reaction. So in this type of therapy, clients are taught to identify and dispute irrational beliefs. So these irrational beliefs have been acquired sometime in the past and then are, ma are maintained through self-indoctrination. -indoctrin so once you have these particular um, beliefs, you repeat them over and over to yourself and you're then indoctrinating yourself. You're influencing the fact that you're going to hold on to these beliefs. 
So then you'll need to learn to replace these detrimental ways of thinking with effective and rational cognitions. Once you have effective and, and rational cognitions, then your emotions change and your reactions change because now you're reacting to a rational way of thinking. So Albert Ellis says that irrational beliefs often take the form of shoulds, must, and oughts. So we think in terms of demands and commands rather than desires and preferences. So we may think, I must get an A in this class. It feels like a demand. This has to happen. In reality, a more realistic and rational way of thinking would be, I would like to get an A in this class. So this is a preference or a desire rather than something that has to occur. An irrational thought could be, he should have called first. A more rational way of thinking would be, I would have preferred if he'd called me first. So again, you want to try to shift your client away from these irrational, rigid, extreme beliefs to thinking in terms of desires and preferences. So Albert Ellis says that there are three basic musts or irrational beliefs that tend to lead to self-defeat. So those three basic musts are, I must do well and be approved of by others. Other people must treat me fairly, kindly, and well. And three, the world and my living conditions must be comfortable, gratifying, and just, providing me with all that I want in life. So Ellis would say that thinking that these things are required for you to function lead to self-defeat. You have to think about these in terms of things you would like to happen but are not guaranteed. They're not necessary in order for you to function. So RGBT uses an ABC framework. And we've talked about ABC in the past in terms of antecedents, behaviors, and consequences, but his ABC framework is a little bit different. So A refers to an activating event or adversity. So something happens, and then what follows from that event is B, your client's belief about the activating event. That, that B, that belief about the event, then leads to some type of consequence. And the consequence could be an emotion, a behavior, or some type of reaction. So again, the emotion or behavior or reaction is a result of B, the belief or the cognitions about the event rather than the event itself. So what you want to add into this equation is D, which is disputing. You want to help your client detect their irrational beliefs and then discriminate between their irrational beliefs and rational beliefs and then debate those irrational beliefs. You're going to help your client to really test their, their beliefs against what is realistic and what is rational and see if those beliefs do um, hold to be true. And then once you've debated and corrected those irrational beliefs, the client can adopt an effective new philosophy. So their new philosophy of life will be based on um, rational thoughts and the events as they are, as opposed to their irrational beliefs about the events. 